So I'm going to talk about the rest of this, my notes from this course. So this was a Bradley E. Schaefer, Remarkable Science of Ancient Astronomy. Angel, you're in my way, honey. Okay, okay, there we go. Now we're all set. All right. So I would recommend this great course, but he, I, if you're anything like me, he or James, we both had a hard time listening to him. We didn't care for the professor or his toupee. I still have some lettuce stuck to my teeth. Anyway. Um, oh, I should have shown you this. They showed an aerial um, kind of picture of Stonehenge. And uh, I wrote a note that um, when I noticed the, the blue stones, um, they looked like the color of the full moon. And once the Google Earth image of Earth with a diagram of Stonehenge came up, I thought the sickle-shaped trench looked like the moon when it's just a sliver of light. Um, the center circle looked like the moon when full. And the smaller trench circle looks like the new moon, dark moon. Um, but maybe that's... Maybe I'm just thinking things, but that's what I was reminded of right away, and he didn't mention that at all, um, the significance of the different types of rocks, which, I mean, really that's very important when you think about how far they had to drag. Like, some of these rocks came from far away, so why, right? They had importance, um, and I, I think that's why, but I don't know. Uh, sunrise at 33 degrees to the right, first gleam of heelstone, two degrees left of heelstone. Archaeologists found a filled-in socket next to heelstone, where the other stone used to stand. The archaeologists' idea that Stonehenge was a site of winter solstice celebrations exclusively seems flawed to me. The heelstones are on the summer solstice side of viewing from center. No heelstones on winter solstice side at all. Pig bones found at a site next to Stonehenge was a big annual feasting site. These yearly feasts were dated close to midwinter because pig bones were found in middens. The other sites with no ambiguity point to winter solstice. The other sites were made around the same time as Stonehenge. Stonehenge Ditch has a diameter of 360 feet, 52 cremation burials recovered, 240 individuals of both male and female. Over 1,400 tombs are known in the Stonehenge area, burials all in sight of the trilithons. Bush Barrow contains two large gold plates with complex geometric designs, three bronze daggers, oh. one bronze axe, and a stone mace. Boscombe Bowman, three adult burial... Mm, three adults buried together, grew up in Wales or the English Lake District. Ambury Archer, buried with rich goods, born up, born and grew up in the Swiss Alps. He was a cripple in poor health. Under three miles to the northeast Stonehenge is a large circular ditch which is surrounding, with a surrounding bank called Durrington Walls. The ditch is one third mile in diameter. It was originally 18 feet deep. 18 feet deep. Uh, Stonehenge Riverside Project has been excavating wattle and Dob House foundations found around ditch. A thousand houses were estimated to have been there. It was the largest settlement in all of North Europe. It was occupied for only 45 years, around 2500 BC. 80,000 bones, most from pigs and cows, no human bones, no young pigs, which shows that the pig farmers were not from Durrington Walls. Isotopic analysis of the bones shows that none of the pigs or cattle were local. They came from all over the British Isles. Many animals herded in from Devon, Cornwall, West Wales, Scottish Highlands. The usage of the bones showed them to have been consumed during large feasts. The pigs were mostly butchered at the age of nine months. Pigs are born only in spring, so all feasting done only at the time of the midwinter solstice. The people buried around the monument had a high number of trauma or defects, so perhaps people traveled to Stonehenge to be healed. So, I don't know if I wrote this in my notes, but I'm thinking about it now because I was thinking about it while I was watching this. Um, 
I remember thinking, why is he basing the usage of Stonehenge? And, like, he's thinking, well, this is a winter solstice thing and all this feasting. This was, this settlement was only occupied for 45 years. 45 years. And, and one particular time. And so he's just, he's extrapolating from that what what the usage of Stonehenge would be just from 45 years of this uh, feasting, you know, because they're, they're wanting to say it's winter solstice thing and they're feasting on these pig bones, or pigs, and the bones left. Anyway, watch it and see what you think yourself. Um, lecture three. New Grange stones have Neolithic art etched onto stone faces about 20 miles north of Dublin in Ireland near the River Boyne. Within a mile there are two large similar passage tombs no, called Noth and Douth, plus 35 smaller burial mounds around. New Grange was built around the year 3100 BC according to the radiocarbon dating when Stonehenge was being started. It was in continual use until 2000 BC. New Grange users, builders, were contemporaries of Stonehenge folks. They were all beaker people. New Grange is a passage tomb, a large dirt mound that covers a stone passage and central tomb. The mound is circular in shape with a diameter of 250 feet, area similar to a football field. Stone, I don't know what that is, curbs maybe, around the circle. Stones have beautiful etched designs and spiral patterns. Mound is 40 feet tall at peak and hides the inner passage and the tomb under this small man-made hill. Passage and tombs built out of big stones piled up like blocks. Large flat stones make up the roof of the passage and many flat stones are piled up together over the central chamber to form a corbelled roof that goes up to about 20 feet. Four plan of tomb has three smaller chambers that the tomb plus passage has an overall cross shape. The passage extends about 65 feet into the mound. The passage has a slight upward slope, so floor of tomb is level with top of entrance of the doorway. Bones and cremated remains of many people were found inside the tomb. Many passage graves and burial mounds were within a mile of New Grange, all with human bones, uh, human burial. Um, New Grange is part of a large Neolithic com burial complex like Stonehenge. New Grange has an obvious alignment where the basin basic inner passage is pointing towards the winter solstice sunrise. For a few days at midwinter, the light from the rising sun illuminates the entire passageway and strikes the far wall of the tomb. For 17 minutes, the sun penetrates to the inner tomb, and only within two days of winter solstice. The sunbeam lights up a wonderful triple spiral carved into the back of the tomb, and there must be some now lost symbolism for this light. The only sunlight that hits the back of the tomb comes from the top of the entrance. The top of the doorway has a unique feature called the roof box. Clear path from above the transom that is not blocked by stones. Light always shining on bodies of dead people. Oh, and my note about the, the symbol on the back of the tomb it's called a triscal. It's associated with movement cycles of life. The three legs represent mind, body, and spirit. Some think that they're linked to other world, mortal world, and celestial world. But he didn't mention that. He didn't seem to know or care what the symbol was because he doesn't really seem to care much about the cultures that he's studying, the, what they were thinking. I don't. What, how can you possibly hope to understand them? And I guess maybe my point about him is I don't think that he does hope to understand them. I think he just wants to poo-poo everybody else. And it's like, these people were building amazing things back when they didn't have the equipment for it. I mean, why? It's nice to know why. Why Why this was so important to them. Isn't it? I. Anyway. And uh, another thing I wanted to point out, like he's talking about these other tombs. No, Harris, you leave Bon Bon alone. Leave him alone. You know you're not supposed, don't do it again. He's talking about these other tombs and um, they're constructed differently. Like he's saying, well, Stonehenge was a winter solstice thing because of these 
pig bones, everyone gathering together at um, that time, that 45 year time period, which for me, that don't do it. There's an 18 foot deep trench around this place. That's pretty significant. And it seems like possibly that for 45 years, maybe um, this was a, a safe safe hold. Like this was, it was basically like the trench was like a moat, right? For me, I'm wondering oh. about that. That maybe this wasn't a place where they normally resided and did their winter solstice thing, but maybe they had to for 45 years. This was maybe the area of the people were at risk or something, so they clustered together in this area, formed this great big trench around them and said, okay, well, this is what's going to happen for this 45-year period, but not normally, right? And so I don't think that the Stonehenge was a winter solstice thing at all. If you look at these tombs that were definitely winter solstice places, um, they're enclosed. They have a, a roof on them, right? They're like a little hill home. And um, so if you go into them, you're, you're protected from... Like, I haven't been to the area, England and Scotland and all that. I haven't been there, but I would like to. Um, but I've heard that the winters are quite rainy. So if I'm wanting to hang out for winter solstice, I'm not wanting to hang out in, in some place with open air. If I'm doing, say I'm, this is a, a spiritual pilgrimage or whatever for me. I'm going to a, will, a winter solstice place. It's going to have a roof, is what I'm saying. I'm not going to go hang out at Stonehenge where I'm like in the pouring rain being miserable. I'm going to go to one of these little, these other tomb places that are, that have a roof over them, right? It makes sense. So anyway, definitely Stonehenge with summer solstice. I, I don't know what he's thinking. Uh, Maze Howe is in the north of Scotland and in the Orkney Islands. It's another prominent passage grave with an obvious solstice alignment. Maze Howe appears as a prominent dome-shaped mound. It's in rolling fields near the edge of a freshwater lock. Its top is about 25 feet tall. It has a diameter of 120 feet. Area is a little larger than a basketball court. Entrance opening to long narrow passage leading to a central chamber with all this being covered by dirt that forms the mound. The central chamber is in the middle of the mound. It has a corbelled roof reaching up to 13 feet high. Three chambers go off from the main room, so floor plan has a sort of cross shape. And I... I did a picture of this. Maze Howe is a passage, the passage is 36 feet long, entering mound from the southwest. About a mile from Maze Howe is the large stone circle called the Ring of Broger. There's also a set of thin stone slabs set vertically making up the standing stones of Stennis. The area has many chambered tombs and standing stones built around 3000 BC based on radiocarbon dating of the remains of the ground. Um, alignment at Maze Howe is toward the position of the horizon of the midwinter sunset. So that's my picture of the Maze Howe thing that I drew, just sketching it. I don't know if you can see that. Um, like at New Grange, the sun, solstice sun shines all the way down the passage, illuminating the back wall of the central tomb. Even when the tomb had entrance blocked by a big stone, the stone wasn't big enough to cover the top of the doorway, forming another roof box where the light could reach the inner sanctum, even when the tomb was closed. This solstice alignment is roughly accurate, but it lacks precision. Sunlight hits the back wall from one month before the solstice to one month after. The most impressive light phenomenon occurs 22 days before and after the solstice. This is because the tomb is Tomb's passage is pointing a bit south of the actual solstice sunset direction. On other days, the sunlight comes in before sunset, while sun is still a bit above the horizon. He says, with a disgusted sort of look on his face and shaking his head non-affirmative, 
Alternatively, it's plausible that the orientation is symbolic with its only being with it only being of lesser importance that the sun strike the back wall on the day of the solstice, built to illuminate ancestors' bones for a good time around the solstice, with the exact solstice state not being of any particular high importance, still there's a prominent, hmm, I don't know, to the solstice, I don't know what I was reading. Scottish recumbent stone circle, standing stones set in a circle, one of the stones known as the recumbent, the recumbent stone lies flat on its side. The two tallest standing stones are on either side of it. Heights of stones get shorter, shorter stone looks toward recumbent. 50 to 80 recumbent stone circles are all in a small region of Scotland up near Aberdeen, all located within a region about 40 to 60 miles in size. Circles all made around 3000 BC. Uh, circles all pointing towards southwest, builders chose sites that had good and distant horizon. These Neolithic farmers from 5,000 years ago were interested in horizon visibility, the main access point to the set setting full moon around midsummer as summer solstice sun is rising in the northeast during the dawn. Full moon would be exactly opposite, off towards southwest. The full moon would appear above the recumbent stone and frame between the two flanking stones. The setting moon is the interest point of these circles. Tomb dates, 5000 to 2000 BC, with skeletal remains inside these tombs. Sometimes the tombs are for a single person. Sometimes they are co communal graves. These graves are called Tholos in Spain and Hunabedin in Holland. Ancient Minoan cemetery at Crete had all 224 graves pointing toward the arc on the horizon over which the sun rises. Local burial custom involves astronomy. Off coast of Spain, Mallorca and Menorca point south with in 30 degrees of south Hager Kim. Malta has similar direction. Tombs in north central Portugal are all directed between east and midwinter solstice. In South France, tombs of Provence and Languedoc are mostly pointing between south and west. I had a picture there, but it's really not that important. Sun daggers at Fajada Butte in Chaco Canyon, New Mexico, where a knife wedge of light passage passes over a spiral on the solstice. Temple of Amun-Ra in Karnak in Egypt has the main axis pointing towards the mid midwinter solstice. Christmas is explicitly a co-opted pagan solstice holiday. Huge bonfires lit before Christmas on levees to light the way for Père Noël by Mississippi River. Scandinavian Festival of Lights on St. Lucia's Day, Kwanzaa solstices were universally important. Um, lecture 4, Egypt's Great Pyramid, Great Pyramids connected to Pharaoh, Khufu, Cheops, the smaller pyramids at Giza are Kathy and Mancori. You know, James should be doing this talk because I don't know anything about this sort of thing and he knows a lot. Alignment of base is cardinal and is accurate to 1 20th of a degree, an angle equal to the apparent size of the moon in the sky. Such a true north-south alignment was made with astronomy. Circumpolar stars never set, so they never die. The Egyptians called the northern stars the imperishable ones, and they are associated with afterlife. Pharaoh's goal was to travel there. Even with a GPS, you couldn't build the pyramids' accuracy. Pyramid shape associated with power, but he doesn't believe this. Uh, pole shafts from king chamber point towards pole star. Thuban north and belt of Orion towards south. Two shafts, queen chamber, have pole shafts pointing all prom at prominent stars, Kochab and Sirius. He doesn't seem to believe this. He says they might have been symbolically aligned. Pharaoh said to make to take many god forms after death. Sa and Sopdet came to be identified as Osiris and Isis. Sa is associated with belt of Orion. Sa is linked to the goddess Sopdet, who is represented by Sirius, the brightest star in the sky. 
sky moves according to processing, slow wobble of Earth's axis. Lecture 5, Chaco Canyon, near Four Corners, Point 2, New Mexico. The altitude is a mile high, 8 inches of rain per year, 830 A.D. to 1150 A.D. Culture was ancestral Puebloan or Anasazi. 1130. A severe drought lasted 50 years, led to abandonment of the canyon. The population split into Pueblo tribes, including Hopi and Zuni. Many current practices of Pueblo tribes are likely similar to those of the Anasazi ancestors. The people are conservative. Chaco Canyon has 12 dominant houses. Pueblo Bonito is a large single building with outer walls in shape of D. 800 rooms to and back portions got up to five stories high. Construction with stones covered with mud plaster and 200,000 leg logs. Um, strontium isotopes in logs proved they were dragged more than 50 miles from Chusca Mountains west and San Mateo Mountains southeast. There are 25 plus kivas inside its structure, plus two huge kivas nearby. A kiva is a mostly underground circular room mainly used for s sacred rituals. Example, Casa Rinconada. Main feature, a long center line, air intake along north wall, a block of stones to deflect direct wind, a fire pit, and a sipa sipapu. The sipapu is a round, shallow, and small hole in the floor, thought to represent the hole by which the ancestors came into the world. Given the space, 2,000 could have lived there, but the area has few graves. He thinks people gathered there for religious pilgrimages. The local land could not support many people. It appears that a small group of elite occupied the site full-time, and they were fed by surrounding people. Nearby Pueblo Alto also has a D-shape with a straight wall pointing east-west. Great North Road is mostly within half a degree of true north. It's a wide road. Stone or adobe curb stones used. Road will run straight over difficult topography rather than going off course for easier route. Ceremonial path, morning star, sacred hand, face of sun, and new moon, markings for sun worshipping stations. Winter solstice ritual is soil. Groups of shield bearers under Kiva. They stomp on Sepapu Hall, singing in ritual battles. On west side is an altar made out of corn. Gord acts as a puppet for evil black plumed snake that has been driving the sun away. The warriors offer gifts and persuade him not to swallow the sun as he does during the solar eclipse. When the sun's god's footprint appears in the sand, the return of the sun is assured. Their lunar months start with first appearance of the crescent moon low in the west after sunset. Crab Nebula, star so bright it could be seen in the day, 1054, new star, supernova explosion. Fajada Butte, petroglyphs there, spiral pattern near top of Butte. Light comes through two rock slabs, sun dagger pierces heart of circle on summer solstice. The rock positions were natural and the circle drawn at appropriate time. The rook shifted due to too much tourist traffic, which totally upset me. And they haven't fixed it. So now the thing doesn't work. Ridiculous. Anyway. Just um, just shows how people don't respect other people. Other people's cultures. People from the past. And um, still, my voice is going. And that's all the notes that I took from this. And that only takes, that's only the first disc not even all the way through. Um, so there's a lot of information here. And there were some other things that interested me um, later on. But I didn't take notes on it. And James isn't here to talk about it. So that's that. And I do have to return this to the library. It came from the Edmonton Public Library um, to me through Tal. And I'm very thankful that I got the opportunity to learn from this great course, and I would recommend it.